Hello, welcome to Pod Songs, where I interview people and write a song about them. It's simple. Inspiring people in service to others. Today, I'm talking about happiness with someone who's made happiness their mission. Oprah columnist and best-selling author who sold over 2 million books. Please welcome Karen Salmons. Okay, today I'm with Karen Salmonson. Did I say that right, Karen? You did. That was very good for a first try. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been practicing <laughs> because I've been starting as a, a self-help songwriter. I've been promoting myself as a self-help songwriter, and I thought it would be good to speak to you, the queen of self-help. You've written over 40 self-help books. You've got self-help courses. You're a meditation teacher. So, and see what I can learn. Pick your That'd brains. Yes, yeah. I love what you're doing. I want to say, I, when I heard you and, and then we spoke, I was charmed and inspired and you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm trying to learn from you. I mean, you're, 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 you're paving the way there. I mean, you, you have beautiful words, beautiful design and an intelligent message. So I think those three things are very, uh, you know, there's always an idea behind all of your you know, whether it's a book about you know how to how to get ahead without a penis or how to make make yourself happy in two minutes a day i mean you know right you, right right you're, right. you're, you're banging how out these ideas in business without a penis it was um a wink to the uh how to succeed in business without really trying which is famous so i did uh, like the wink to it how to succeed in uh, business Okay. which weirdly enough was a big bestseller this was before people put curse words in in book titles you know now it's like normal like the word penis whatever you know now there's like the f word the s word oh my god there's so many curse words and i had how to be happy damn it before people like i was at one point and people are like you can't put that in a self-help book you know my feisty <laughs> personality but now so many self-help books with like you know swear words in them it's crazy yeah well before you you got stuck into it self-help books where um you had boring. to put them in, they were put them in a paper bag yeah <laughs> well, that's why i started doing it i was reading them because i've always loved psychology but ripping the covers off of them mm -hmm. because i didn't want to be seen like in a cafe in public reading a self-help book so i wanted to create self-help for people who wouldn't be caught dead reading self-help or self-help that you could give to a friend as a gift and they're not going to punch you because the book looks and sounds kind of cool you know so nobody was doing this because i'm ancient you know i've admitted to you <laughs> actually i'm even more ancient since what day was it tuesday i had my birthday i turned 60 six zero. Oh my god how did that happen well, so <laughs> i've been doing this for a while so when I did like how to be happy, damn it, it was the year 2000 that I sold it and how to succeed in business without a penis was back in the nineties. So that's like, you know, ancient history. Who can remember? So nobody, it was weird. Nobody was cursing back then and selling books with curses in them. Now it's like more normal. It's more normalized. Yeah, but what do you, um, how do you start with, uh, do, you, do you think of a, like a way that you've been helped and then that that's not, not no one's writing about it or oh, how do like you? Like what inspires me? Yeah. 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 Well, I definitely, I call it turning pain into purpose. So a lot of times a book happens because it's like, I need it. Um, so like one example, I wrote a book called the bounce back book, um, which has like, a red rubber cover on the outside and inside or resiliency psychology tips. And it was during a, a period of my life that I had, I call it the bucket list from hell where I was like going through like, as if I was checking off every kind of like <laughs> challenging event that could happen. I mean, really, um, I, I joke in the book that I kept waiting for like a candid camera crew to pop out from behind the planter in my living room and just tell me that I was like being punked for that year because it was like so such a challenging year. 
but I, I had a sexual assault before the Me Too movement. This is something I'm not too happy to be a pioneer in, you know, but no. I was doing sexual assault before. I'm sorry. I use humor. I use humor. <laughs> But you're, like a now, York, you're a New Yorker. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, now it's it's more talked about. But back then, I even had trouble talking about it with friends and family. Um, but that book was helping me with that. And then during that same year, my father passed away. I had a dealing with a business partner that was a little bit um, like felt like a slight betrayal. And so I wrote the book, bounce back book, because I was trying to bounce back from all of these things that happened like in this one year it was like oh my god mm -hmm. so and then i also i wrote a book i'm a late in life mom and i had my miracle son at age 50 five zero wow yeah so i turned 60 this week and he turns 10 like in next week or so Gosh. so right but that was after trying for a long time and not giving up. Mm -hmm. And I, I, so I had my baby at 50 and I promised my son I would do everything I could um, to live to 100. So I decided to make that like this mission. So I went on a quest, a two year quest to research uh, longevity, experts, nutrition, health, everything, aging, everything, neuroscientists, to learn everything about um, slowing down the aging process. And not only living longer, but also I want to protect my mind, you know, with um, clarity of mind, protect against dementia, and all of that. So, and then I turned all that into a book, Life is Long. So that's again, turning, like, I want it for me. I'm doing all this work. I'm a research geek. I love research. So I turned that into a book. Um, so everything that I do is sort of like something that's from like a passion project, I would call it. It reminds me, I saw a stand-up comedian once and he was on stage and he said, uh, uh, my, my, uh, the phone was ringing, it was my mother. I didn't answer because, I only answered because I need the material, you know. So. Uh, yes. I feel, I feel like it's like with you, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're subconsciously looking for the most, the, the most difficult situation so you can get a book out of it. I hope not. Oh my God. I hope not. Um, but I do have a theory. I mean, my overall arching view on life is that um, we're here to learn lessons that help us to grow into our best selves. And maybe on some level our, we attract what we need to learn or you, we repeat until we relearn it, you know, we, right. until we learn it. We, we repeat what we don't repair. Somebody yeah, that's true, yeah. It's not yeah, mine. I love that phrase. We repeat what we don't repair. And so I do believe that's true. Um, like one of my books was about Prince Harming. And, and I don't have Prince Harming now. Like I don't have, I don't even have friend harming. I don't have family harming. Like I've really self-corrected any kind of, challenging people in my life you know so i don't need that and like now i'm saying that i feel like i'm gonna hex myself but <laughs> <laughs> something else don't worry there's plenty more where that came from oh okay no i hope not um so i feel like at a certain point in writing about it it actually my books are almost my accountability buddies on some level mm -hmm. i think that also becomes part of it and when you go from um Victim to student to teacher. It really helps you to get out of your patterns because mm -hmm. when I'm researching it or writing about it, I change my mentality. Like i turning the pain into purpose. So I feel like, okay, this is okay that this happened. It's not okay. But like, I'm meant to learn this, to learn. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you, you know. Um, and I'm meant to learn this so I can grow. And now I'm meant to share this so I can help others. So I feel uplifted instead of resentful by the experience. And then the last thing is, so from victim to student and then to teacher. So while I'm teaching it, there's some part of me that says, okay, I'm now the freaking teacher. I can't fall back into this because I'm like a teacher. <laughs> you know? And that book becomes my accountability buddy. 
you know? Yeah. And then I forced myself to rise up to the highest level because I'm like, you know, I wrote about this. I should know better. So, so then that really helps me. No, that's, yeah. No, I've noticed that in my life as well, lessons when you learn and they stop repeating. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 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 And then, you know, if you ever get to that, that hall of self-judgment and you get asked, you know, so did you really learn the lesson? You can hold up a, you know, 300-page glossy printed uh, book saying yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I could write a book on that. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Because, you know, when, you know, when people, some people they say writing a journal helps a lot, but, you know, you've taken that many levels further. You know, you really digested those those experiences. Yeah. yeah, I love journal writing too. I recommend that. I've, I've created journals to help people. That's been a big part of my progress is writing. I love writing by hand, not just by computer. I feel like there's different parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. And there was this book called A Stroke of Genius. And it was about, I think that was the title. It came out like 15 years ago. And it was about um, somebody who was like a neuroscientist who had a stroke and as she was healing from it, she was self-aware of how the brain worked. And so she was kind of like analyzing her own healing process from her place of knowledge about the brain. And I remember towards the end of the book, she wrote that um, she was able to write and think by hand, but think differently when she was on the computer, that her brain, areas of the brain work differently when writing by hand than by computer. And I thought about that because I always feel I write differently when I have the pen in the paper than when I'm typing on the computer. So I, I love, I still make journal writing part of my writing process. So you, did I say on your website, you have one page journals, one page lines? I have, I have the Listen to Your Heart journal, um, which is about that. Oh, wait, I can, here. I, my, I told you my the computer stacked. Here we go. I can pull that one out of the stack. <laughs> you have your books everywhere, just uh, holding well, open doors. Them. Yeah, because I like <laughs> it's the same to... with me with my own albums. You know, nobody right. wanted them. <laughs> Don't you? Well, it's good to remind them. But this is the listen to your heart, and inside, I love design as well. And it's just a line a day, and there's like oh. pretty watercolor art, which I didn't do the watercolor art, but I art, you know, I art direct and creative director, and. Um, and you just write a line a day because people are so busy and it has writing prompts in it to help you mm -hmm. writing prompts that I've used in my own journal. Um, like I would write questions up at the top of my own journal this to trigger like me to write something. Um, it helped me on some level. Um, I sometimes I would just write, I had one that I kept using, which, um, was and that's Alexa in the background? Oh, I wonder what's going on in the background there. Yeah, um, <laughs> I would write in the top of the journal, What do I need to know that I don't want to know? That was like one of my favorites because I think sometimes we block our intuition, yeah, because we don't want to know, it's like too painful to know, you know. So that was one of mine. So I put a bunch of mine from my own journal inside to listen to your heart. Okay, to kickstart people, yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you think like living in New York, I mean, that's, has accelerated you in all of these? I mean, you think you're like the average of the, these people that you, I mean, you're the tip of the iceberg that I'm seeing now, but really all your friends, are, you know, you're talking about this stuff. And... Um, well, I do tend to find people that are of a certain kind of perspective on life, you know? But New York has all so many different, it's such a, like a, um, like a soup of different people. Which part are um, you in? Pardon? Which part of the, the big island? I'm in the village. So, okay. and you know what, and I do think like each part of New York is almost like its own separate country. Or like, village, yeah. Or village, like, but I think if you look around the village, it looks different than if you look around the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. Sure, sure. You know, so. You know, we, I do think that it does attract certain people. So, yeah, I guess so. Are you so. constantly stimulating? I mean, are you, are, you, are you still out and about? I mean, are you, you know, going well, to shows or what? With, with the, before COVID, after COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Bad timing. Different. Oh, my gosh. No, we don't. 
I'm very conservative about going out um, because I am a late in life mom. And even though um, I don't feel 60, you know, I am 60 and I did make a promise to my son that I would live to a hundred. Yeah. So um, I would, I'm really being conservative about how much we, we go out and what we do. And New York is conservative. There aren't that many choices for what to do either. There's no indoor dining or anything like that. So you can you have to wear a mask when you go around? Or we everywhere? wear the mask. Um, I, I wear gloves because I'm the one touching things. My son is just like, you know, but I'm just, I'm just very careful, you know, mm-hmm. um, which might surprise people because, I don't know, maybe they think because... I don't know what they would think, but I have a very conservative side to me as well as my innovative, creative <laughs> risk. No, you have all, all parts of your brain working. I mean, you've got the, you know, the data side, the, the creative, I mean. Yeah, know, I have the right brain, left brain, although I'm not left-handed. But I, are you left-handed? No, no. Yeah. I love left-handed people. My son is <laughs> No, I love when there's the right brain, left brain. I love people. You think that makes a difference? The left hand, left-handed people are genuinely, maybe sorry, ten is a little too early to tell. But. Yeah, it's too late. But in my life, um, I've met a lot of left-handed people, and sometimes I spot them and I shock them. I'm like, are you left-handed? Because I, I look for somebody that has the right brain, left brain. Ah. You're real, you analyze people now. I mean. You're being analyzed now. I'm even <laughs> analyzing each and every one of your listeners who I can't even see. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's just, trust me, it's just me and you. <laughs> We're just, this, this, this podcast is just getting started. So, uh, uh, well, I'm, pre, I'm predicting who's listening. And by the way, Steve, watch it right now with your loved ones. I think you're, um, you're, you're using your stress to take it out on them, Steve. You know who you are, Steve, who's listening right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making it intuitive. I'm kidding. But. Please leave a review in iTunes, as, uh, Steve, because <laughs> we need to do that. So. <laughs> yes, yes. But no, I can only imagine, like, uh, because I live in the countryside in Italy, so uh, to speak to someone like you, I have to make it, to speak to someone inspiring, I have to make an appointment on Zoom and, uh, you know, have, have it, make it, have an excuse to have a, um, doing a podcast. So, uh, you know. so what's it like where you live? You get to roam wild and free. There's like, not, are you less aware of um, COVID? Are you? you no, know? We, we have to wear a mask in Italy now after six o'clock, but not many people are doing that really. Um, where it's very touristic season now, so everyone from Napoli comes down to where we are in the Cilento, and you know, there's no one's roaming around. But uh, yeah. It's, there's, you know, kissing each other like the Italians only can, I mean, the Italians can do. But still, the hospitals are empty and there's no real, there's no, no problem. So, yeah, it's pretty open. But, you know, the, on the, in the normal life sense of COVID, then it's still, there's not many interesting people to chat to here on a, on a cultural <laughs> level. I mean, I mean, imagine living in New York, you really, uh, you have to, push people away now. I mean, you've got to really, <laughs> you know, you must yeah. have so many, you know, Mets messages to meet up and, you know, I mean, so you're, you're, you're relying on, you need time to do your things. Yeah. You need your, I mean, what's your, what's your work routine? Do you, do you yeah. get all done in the morning and then. Yeah. You know, it's weird. I, it's in a weird way. I've been practicing for quarantine because I do spend a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm a weird combination of introvert with extrovert rising. I don't know what you would call it because I, I don't know. I'm very happy being inside reading books and writing, but I'm not like shy. I'm not good with crowds. I like one-on-ones like that's kind of my personality. So I spent a lot of time inside um, doing what I would normally do, which is, like reading, reading, writing, everything but arithmetic, the, you know, the old reading, writing, okay. arithmetic. Um, and then I do right now, um, a lot of people that are uh, dealing with, you know, the pandemic are looking to write books and uh, create businesses, online businesses. So I've actually um, been doing more one-on-one branding consulting 
So uh -huh. I have a bunch of clients now that I help with their brands because I come from the world of advertising. Okay. I'm a writer and designer and da, 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 da. And, you know, so I love that because it's a way to have my one-on-one -on -one time with people, you know, so I don't feel like I'm, I mean, I am stuck inside my apartment while I'm doing it. I'm doing it all by Zoom, but at least I feel like the human connection. Um, so I, I do those uh, throughout the day. Oh, that must be very fulfilling, no? Because, you know, you're, you, with the self-help, you're trying to help someone deal with a problem. But this way, you're, it's just all about a solution. It's about something. It's about solutions. And I also feel like when you write a book, it's even though you get reviews and whatever, but it's sort of like the tree falling in the forest. If you don't hear it fall, does it make any noise? So when I write, send out the book, you might feel this way as an artist. Yes, you get the reviews and that's where social media comes in. But there was a time because remember I'm ancient, right? I'm 60, but there was a time that you wouldn't really hear from people. You might see the, the book sales numbers, but now we do get to see and hear from social media. So there is some mm. of that. But really tracking it, helping a specific individual and hearing them and feeling them say, wow, this helped or this changed or thank you. Like it's so much more fulfilling. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, oh, you nice. feel the ripple effect in more than, than just a book to, there's a different so it's a different kind of fulfillment, you know? Yeah, it's also the delay factor as well, because, you know, you write a book and then that maybe a year later it goes out. Very And you've already, you're already on the, the, the second one after that, so... That's very true. That's very yeah, true. it's also with albums, you know, music is... But in our case with musicians, we play live as well, which is, is a oh, lot more... You that's get a real fun. example. That's a perfect yeah. example. Like, you want to do the live thing because you really get that feedback. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, so I like the coaching because I get the feedback. I like sure. That. I've heard people it's say it's, pod, they it's, get, like inter, it's like energy. It just feels good. You know. Sure, sure. I've done a few. I spoke with a few podcast hosts, and they find it, they say it's also a bit like speaking to the void because you, you know, you don't have a two TV studio audience. You know, the podcast goes out later, and you, maybe you get some comments on social media, but you're not really. Yes. Yeah. We're all speaking to the void, basically. Yeah. Our voices are echoing around. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, so what kind, of, what kind of businesses are you, what are you focused on helping? Just to give me a, a, an idea. Oh, um, usually it's, I, okay, so each person. One person is about um, tapping into intuition more. That's kind of her business. Another person is um, a business guy who wants to write a book. Mm. So I'm helping him just create a book and he wants to do it. He leads teams. So it's sort of a part inspiration, part leadership book. Another woman is, uh, oh my gosh, she became a gazillionaire in her late 50s and she wants to help women. Mm. Um, another one uh, is a great fine artist who has these cards that are, not tarot cards, they're medicine cards. And she does this gorgeous artwork on them and has a way of using them. And so, and another person is uh, kind of an, just an inspirational author. Uh, oh, another one does theta healing. So they're all sort of in that space. Oh, okay. Um, that sounds fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if there's someone listening to this who wants some, you know, they've come up with an idea, how long, for, how far along do they have to be? Just help. I work with people on different stages um, because, I mean, this, I, you know, it just goes back to the right brain, left brain. Um, I am a geek. I'm a research geek. And I, um, part of the, how I am grateful that my business has continued to thrive. You know, I quit my job in advertising when I was 30 and now I'm 60. So I've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. Um, I say the world is constantly changing. Don't forget to change with it. And so I teach myself things like search engine optimization, which might sound really boring, but I try to get excited about it and teach myself it. 
And actually, maybe I am reading, writing, and arithmetic because I look at the charts and I see, oh, if this worked and why and which pages are most visited. So when I create, I help brands and authors, entrepreneurs with their um, websites and traffic and email. All well, that, young, that young kid stuff, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is young kid. I make it, I joke that it, I make it so easy that even a 50 year old can understand it. Like I, well, maybe I, that's, maybe that's the red line through all, cause I'm, I've got to write something about this. So let's get back to focus on oh, that. Oh, I've got to oh. write. Oh, okay. So yes. maybe that's the, the red line between all your, is that also with your advertising background is that you, you, you have, you have this, I'm holding up a mug. And then you have to say, you know, what's the benefit? What's, you know, what don't worry about, or what is the, what makes it special or, Cut through the crap, you know, cut through the... I do. I, do. I, I try to figure out what's unique to each person and brand. And I start with doing what I call an audited inventory, which is almost like part therapy session, like, and then part business dive. Um, because I want, I feel like when somebody bothers to write a book or create a brand, they have some sort of inner need that I want to make sure that they're hitting that sweet spot of fulfillment for. And so I don't want to just be like, okay, you're selling daughter. Like I want to make sure that I'm like for them, for them or the, for, for the them, customer. For them. For, them. Okay. Well, for, for the person. But I also believe in working with people throughout the years, because I've been doing this forever, um, that each of my clients I find a commonality that would the pain purpose thing, like they want to help because their origin story has something that they've gone through and now they want to help others. Usually okay. it's pretty well, much. All your, all your books now, I mean, you're a living and, example. And it's like that with the people that come to me. So I want to make sure it's fulfilling for them to sell a gazillion copies of something like that. I'm still, I like that. I make it as, and then that's, then that's part of their brand DNA. Like what they're, what they're, and then it gives them a feeling of legacy, what they want to be known for. Like almost like when they're on their deathbed, they're like, man, I'm glad I created that book because I created the ripple effect into the world of blank. This is my legacy. This is like, I want to go that deep. I, I oh, go wow. that deep. I do. Gosh. So like what you're doing, don't you want that for you? Don't you want to feel like you've created a ripple effect and that there's like when you're um, like, you feel like you've made an impact or that you're known for something, but known for something that you want to be known for. Like if you were known for something and it wasn't really in your craw, it wouldn't be as fulfilling. Like there's something you really want. that's you. It's very, you know, that's as you -y as possible. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about me then. Let's do a five minute Karen consultation for me for pod songs. You've, you've seen the, you've seen me. That's all I have. Yes. Yes. Me. But, but what, uh, so what advice can you give me? What do you, what am I? What, well, I'm going to have to ask probably you a terrible question. start to the conversation. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, okay. I'll, I'll, well, I call them karate chops. So what I do okay. is I ask a lot of questions and I usually do it rapid fire. Okay. Hit me, hit me. I'm ready. But I'm going to start off with an easy one because we're recording this and I don't want to go to karate chop on you because I feel like I want to, I don't want, you know, because you have I'm, to. I'm British, to so things. let's just, you keep your New Yorker direct questions to, to yourself and just be very, just no karate okay. chops, just very gentle stroke. Well, I'm still going to start off with a gentle one because I don't want to scare you. <laughs> I'm sweating. Um, yes, yes, yes. So, okay, here's one. This one's very not scary question. If you were to give a TED talk right now, what would you want to give a TED talk about? Um, <laughs> can I edit in later? A good answer? <laughs> See, that's the other thing. I also don't want to put you on the spot either. No, no. Well, I'm very into um, to, to Dr. George King and the Ethereum Society and the teachings of life after death. So I'd give a TED talk about oh. uh, life after death. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating. Okay, so that's very important to you. See, I did not yeah. even know that. The life after death. Yeah, wow. because people don't know, but uh, I've been studying it. I know pretty well now what happens after life after death. So, 
Okay, well, have you written any songs about that? Not yet, no. I need to interview someone about it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm stressed. I think I have a client for you that you could interview about. Okay. That. All right. Wow. Yes. Is... Yes, I do. Okay. And now I'm veering off course, but I've been oh, interested no. in that lately, you know, for morbid reasons. Well, you're, near, <laughs> you're, you're nearer than me. I'm, I'm near death. No, God forbid. Delete, delete, delete. No. <laughs> but, you know, I've been interested in that. Um, but I'm more, I joke that because of my logical aspect of me, my conservative aspect of me, I say instead of being woo-woo, I'm more like one woo. Like, you know what woo-woo means? Mm -hmm. Like woo-woo. I'm more like one woo. But I'm really open to life after death. And one of my clients is, is about that. Um, but, and I had some weird things happen after my father passed away. But okay, so with you, so then what I want to know is when people listen to your music, what are um, some of the, the pain points that you're helping people to heal? What are the well, I had, of listening? Well, I had the, uh, the new album I just done was Deeper. It was about the mind. And the one before that was all about Ayurveda, which is the body. And then the next one I'm working on is the spirit. So this is besides all. Right. Yeah, my so the, you know, uh, this is like you know, I'm doing the, and I'm doing the podcast on the side, you know, two songs a week. So I'm uh, I'm uh, keeping busy. So uh, good, good. So how do people? What are the feelings uh, that people feel after listening to your music? What are the emotional benefits? Well, I think the greatest gift you can give to someone is wisdom. So I want people. I take I take a wisdom that I find. So what you do with your quotes or you know what you do with all your books you you find a great wisdom and then you translate it into another into a because you can hear some great master talk and you know people have fallen asleep halfway through uh, yeah, yeah. because and you you connect with different people so in my way you know with my off the cuff style i condense it into a three minute song and then you can take away that and swallow that pill and then maybe you you go and get the proper the full shebang later on, you know, spark okay. some interest, you know. The wisdom. So then let me go back to life after death. Do you feel like wisdom is something that we're meant to experience in this life after death? Like, is that part of, how does wisdom relate to life after death for you? How can you connect those two? Well, knowing about, I mean, the wisdom, you, you after you, you pass on, you, you don't go anywhere. You just, you're reincarnated in the astral realm. And then you die there and you're reborn here and you die there. And it's just as physical as here. The cities and trains and buses and you get a job. It's the astral. And it's on a different vibration, but it's right here, a different frequency of light. It so, does wisdom change how you vibrate and thereby it changes how you're reincarnated? I'm just trying to look for a correlation between... Exactly, yeah. There's, there's, there's about seven different levels and depending on your karma more than your, you know you could go to the up the different levels if you're if you're um it's like it's like on earth it's exactly the same you know if you you can live a different like if you go to the bottom of the sea you couldn't live there and if you go to the top of a mountain you couldn't breathe there you can so when you this. the more wisdom that one attains well higher... it's also if you go if you take a if you take if you take a heavy metal fan to sit in a library or a church for for for, 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 for an hour he wouldn't enjoy it and if you take a monk to a heavy metal concert, he wouldn't enjoy it. So it's all about burning through desires and you, you know, you, you go to the, the frequency you vibrate at. So, but okay. to, to you take, you take your wisdom, you still have knowledge. If you can play the piano, that's why, you know, Beethoven was born and play the piano it's quite quickly. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, you remember skills. So yeah. Okay. So knowledge. let me ask you a question. Does the energy of music help you to, get wisdom better because music is vibrating. So if you deliver a message with music, is a person able to receive the wisdom better with the vibration of music? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I could do it, you know, I often do it without any music, just as like poetry, but with, with singing it. So it's um, because when I studied Ayurveda, they learn, they learn it from sutras. So it's, they can remember, thousands of hours of books because it rhymes it flows into the next one in a rhythmic pattern so when it fits into your brain you know so yeah wisdom is stored in that you know oscillating you know. yeah so I yeah think, i would think so because also 
music elicits an emotion. And I think that if you have a strong emotion, you can maybe absorb something. And um, I don't know, I'd be interested in the energy of music. I know that like, think about like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like it's, now you know why I'm not a singer for a living. Um, it's easier. It's the to one thing you can't do. So. <laughs> I'm, pleased, I'm pleased that there's one thing that, that Karen can't do that and made me feel better. I guilty. Um, so um, I do know that music helps people to remember things better. So maybe it helps you learn better. And so maybe by combining wisdom with music, you're really helping people to attain higher levels of wisdom. Okay. Because I've seen, you know, like with your Facebook pic, you know, you're posting all these quotes and, you know, you have the, the eyes and, you, you know, you're looking and it's visually beautiful and that. But, yeah, maybe if there was some, because, you know, you, a melody does not stay in your head. People, people say they sing my songs again, you know, you, yeah. and many, you, you're always singing a song again, the chorus comes back to you. So, yeah, it's like it penetrates. So, yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. And I, and I guess also... I also am a big believer that repetition works, repetition works, repetition works. So if it's a song that has a message and you really love the song and you listen to the song over and over, you're more likely to listen to a song you love over and over. So you're more likely to retain the wisdom because it's a song that you want to listen to over and over. So you really get that message in your mind better. So you help people to attain wisdom better. Well, that's what I want, to, I want to do with these pod songs is I want to interview people who are trying to serve others because serve the, ser serve the servers. So give them, can take their message, which, you know, like, like bliss brain, you know, about how to meditate better yeah. and, you know, and then take that. And so that people can, people can remember that, that, and then they go away and read the book maybe. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm reminded of something suddenly that I haven't thought about in a while. Um, my very first published book was actually a novel. And it was about a girl who was in advertising, and I used to be in advertising. And But she's not me because she has blue eyes and I have dark brown eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only difference. <laughs> no, she's sort of an exaggerated version of me. But in, in the book... She loves writing jingles. And by coincidence, I loved, I love, I always love music. I do. So oh, in yeah, the book, yeah. right. You know, so yeah. in, in the book, there's a lot in it about the power of music, but I wrote this book back in like 1990. So that's like a lot of years ago. And, um, and in the book, here's something weird about this book. She has an art director who's really into Wiccan, which I'm not into. I'm not into Wiccan. What is that? What is Wiccan? Wiccan is... I love you. Oh, there's my son. I love you, sweetie. I'm being interviewed live. Uh, luckily, he said, I love you. It could be worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've trained him well. I know. He always says, I love you. He's now mad that I saw. He always does. I have the best son not in the cool. world. Not cool, he says, because I what said luckily. Is sweetie, um, it's 1035. I love you. You could bring him on. I mean, uh, let's order egg shop. He wants to order up. He looks a little sleepy. He looks a little. His he's got like he's so cute. I love him. And he always wakes up, and that's his first words. I love you. That's why he's mad that I see. <laughs> he always says, "I love you, mom." I love him. I love him. I love you too, sweetie. Um. So what was I about to say? A oh, Wiccan is witchcraft. And mm -hmm. I was fascinated by it at the time. And I decided to write about it because I wanted to write about the power of, this is before I wrote several books, but the power of belief and thoughts to affect what your life is. And I thought advertising, like if you said, like the placebo effect, if you say this toothpaste will bring you love, then you might actually have a placebo effect. You know, like there's a placebo effect. Anyway, the book gets into all of this, but it's actually a funny book. And, um, and in fact, John Stewart, the comedian, read it and loved it. And Marissa Tomei optioned it. So, you know, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, the point is, is music. So in the book, when I started to research, because I'm the research geek, Wiccan for the book, because I wanted to know about the power of illusions and beliefs and advertising and our own beliefs and all of that. So... 
I went undercover and I joined like this little Wiccan group and um, they use um, music in their Wiccan spells. <laughs> they use music in it and they repeat it over and over and they feel like that, I haven't thought about this in 30 years, Ooh. that that helps the energy of the music helps them to bring what they want. And in my book, I compare that to jingles because jingles stay in your head. Sure, sure, yeah. And, and so maybe the energy of lyrics, and there is a power. I mean, gosh, golly, you know, there's certain songs that I listen to with their lyrics and I feel like really mm. in that state of mind. But I'm too sexy for my music. I'm so happy. happy. I'm so happy. I mean, happy. that's basically, he repeats that the whole song. So yeah, that could yeah, be yeah. an advertising. And it was used in advertising. So yeah, do you, yeah. did you write jingles? Do they still write jingles? Is, I, is used, this... I wrote jingles. I wrote jingles up the Wazuzi jingles. Yeah. <laughs> this was so long ago. I mean, nobody, you know, this is like, do, and I don't do know. Do they You're still do that? Country. What? Is it still a thing, jingles on advertising or? Even advertising isn't really what advertising was back when I was in it. Where am I? It's very lady? different. Sweetie, I'm literally being recorded. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's, yes. Sorry. Ah, it's okay. Um, so, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's stealing the show, Karen. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so, but I'm thinking about it with the word wisdom because I hear wisdom is important. So it's not just a feeling you want, you want insight. You want insight. So I'm wondering how that vibration energy helps people to really get that insight. And I know music, I mean, you know, because you're in the biz. I mean, what about like the whole idea of like um, hitting certain like gongs that get the vibrate and get your attention and then mm. you're kind of thinking at a higher level or right aren't there things like that that also well, I, I mean um the way i usually start to write songs is you know i do a lot of quote songs like you had quotes on your on your website yes, yeah. I've, I've, I've sung them so and once someone has a an insightful phrase or it's a mm. it's a it, it has its own rhythm in it you know it, it, mm. it, they, they've spent a lot of time to write this quote and I'll put a lot of focus and energy into it. So, you know, it'll be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not yet the end. You know, it has right. a natural. So, when, when, yeah, when I say that, then a melody comes into my head, you know, and that it has a, that has a vibrationary quality, a melodic, melodic, and that fits. And then it just takes, it just takes five minutes. You can bang out what five, every, one every five minutes. So. What inspired you? to merge your music with the inspiration and the wisdom? What, what was like that moment where you decided, because it's kind of unique. Well, I think I've, or, you know, I've been, when I look back, I've, I've got over 400 songs. So, wow. you know, there, there, are, there are documentary songs. So you read an article in the newspaper and then you write a song about that. And that's been done, you know, that's, that's a standard way trooper doors, you know, throughout the ages of, you know, writing about the king or something like that. So, you know, and then there's the, there's the wisdom, the phrases. Can, can, so you basically you take, a, you take the line like that, it'll be all right in the end. And then you just, you, the court of the verse explains a bit more about what the right. chorus is. So, you know, you, you just fill in some related, or, you know, some back some supporting for the, for the chorus, which is, you've already got. So, in the same key, at the same rhythm, in the same melody, with the same, with similar chords. So, mm. um, but yeah, because once you've got that wisdom to hang it on, then it's a, it's a, always been to me a justification for the song. Because what I hate about all the music on the radio is that they've got nothing to say. You know, it's no, there's no message that that I can take away from that. It just come up to the microphone and or been right. in the studio and say, oh, we, we better put some words on this at the end, yeah? And that's really, or, or somebody with nothing to say, it's just such a wasted opportunity, I think. That's what really bugs me. Yeah, I love it. No, I love what you do. I love it. 
Well, I'm interviewing you here, Darren, but uh, now you're interviewing me, so <laughs> I'm going with it. It's free consultation. It's probably cost staff thousands of dollars, so yeah. I'll take I'll take it what I can get. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll put your price per hour in the show notes. Oh, okay. yeah, a link to the consultation. Clear out your calendar. You're going to be booked up. Okay, especially Steve. 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 Steve's already. Steve's already. Talking. He's already messaged me. Yeah, <laughs> he said apologized and. Uh... So where were so, we? Well, I don't know. I, I've completely. Uh, I love you. I love he hasn't said it in a couple of minutes. Now I'm worried. No, no. Yeah. He could come just in now. You can bring him on to keep the conversation going. You know. But no, he. Then, you know. Ari, do you want to come on camera and say hello? No, he doesn't want to right now. Mom's doing another podcast. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this has been great, Karen. I mean, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I had a good time. I got a good time chatting to you. Me too. Me too. So, Anything Is you want to add? Anything else? Oh, I anything else you want to? Computer's almost out of battery. Uh oh. Hold on. I feel we're coming to a natural end here. So. Oh yes, that was symbolic. Yeah. My computer's like five yeah. percent battery, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, but I have to write a song about you now. So I have to take your, your condense your wisdom down of your sixty yeah. years down to three minutes. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Any, hey. any tip, anything you want to be immortalized for? Um, you know, when you, you just tell me, you know, when you're in the hall of judgment and, you know, you, you have to say you have to justify this life. What's, of all the books, what is the one that, that you're going to hold up and say, you know, I left this behind and, and forget about, please forget about this one. Um, let's see. Um, well, I do, I have my book, Think Happy, which is, I do think um, that there's ways, you know, how you start your day you know, affects, you know, use your AM to aim yourself where you go, like how you start your day is very important to where the direction, your thoughts are a steering wheel. Okay. You know? I really believe that. And, um, and so I'm always aware of um, my thoughts. And I also believe that identity is destiny. And so who I think I am affects what I do. So I don't know. I have too many thoughts on this. My gosh. Um, but I also sometimes start my day thinking about whatever my problem is and then working backwards to figure out, like, well, who do I need to be? Who do I need to become to get everything I want in my life? That's another question that I ask myself. So if I need to be more organized, then I think about the word organized. Or if I need to be uh, more direct of a communicator, or if I need to be more disciplined, I think about those words as I go about my day. And I let those words kind of, I write a to-be list, not just a to-do list. To-be list. Think, yeah. And I think about those words as I go about my day. I, I do that sometimes. That's another journal exercise. I heard someone's favorite song on another podcast. They said it was a dooby 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 doo. I write about this on my site. I say Frank Sinatra is great corner buddy, but he's he's got it backwards. It has to be be do be do be do, not do be do be. Be do be do be do. But then you have to. And I suck at singing, but. Who you are affects what you do. So it all begins with your destiny. Like if you think, um, I suck at money, guess what? You're going to do habits that make you suck at money. If you think, I suck at relationships, guess what? You're going to do habits. So you have to change your internal programming first before you change the habits. Because if you, you have a book about habits, habits? but yeah. your internal programming is still negative, you're going to revert. You're going to revert. Yeah. You have to go back in and change your initial sense of identity because we get what we feel we deserve. So you have to start with the B 
to really have long lasting results with your do. Okay. Just Otherwise, you keep reverting. Like, you feel you don't deserve. You feel you don't deserve. Guess what? You're going to get the life that's not like your highest level life. So you have uh, to start with the B. It should be B do B do B do. I'm just looking through your book, your website, all the books. Maybe I could just write your book type, make your book titles rhyme together, and just put them all. That would cover <laughs> everything. <laughs> I think I think Liam Gallagher suggested it had a song. And he presented it to Noel Gallagher in Oasis that was all the song titles of Oasis rhyming. And he said it was the worst song he'd ever heard. So ah. yeah, I probably won't do that. But I just think in a way to, to get this in, you know. Mm. But happy is definitely a theme. You've got think happy, instant happy, how to be happy, damn it. Um, I have a new one coming out in December called Happy Habits, which is all okay. about how to create happier habits and break the naughty ones. Okay. So, okay. And, and a song called About Happy, that's a guarantee to get into number one because it's been done, so. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, I say, seek out the happiness in all of life's crappiness. Okay. That rhymes. There we go, there we go. I just need a title, I just need a, I just need a title. Okay, there you go. Seek out the happiness in all of life's crappiness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Writing it down, it's going in there, it's going, there are no bad ideas. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's in your... I'm not going to give you anything that rhymes with penis, even okay. though that was one of my book titles. I'm not going to do I that see, for the lyrics. I see it now, you have, you have... Not too much and, naughty words. What? You have Michelangelo's David... Uh, yeah, for cover. the book cover, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, we're getting there. I mean, you could really write it for me, this, the lyrics, oh. this song, because, um, you know, I'm really busy and, you know, you do it so much better. I, <laughs> no, you're fantastic. You're awesome. Oh, I, I'm in good hands with you. I know it. Pressure. Pressure. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll just sit, I'll just go download all your books, read through them all. And, yeah. <laughs> and what's the title of your next book? Because that might be happy, a nice time. Happy habits. And it's, uh, I definitely believe that your life is the sum of the habits you do most often. So <coughs> it's about, this is the coffee. I'm fine. Um, <laughs> it's about uh, developing more habits that lead to happiness. But some of them are unusual. It's not like, you know, like. So what's an example? What's a. Uh... You say on your website here, 50 science-based rituals to adopt or stop to boost health and happiness. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, let's see, there's one about, oh, this one was sort of funny, adorableness therapy, that actually there's studies that show that if you watch videos of like, like all those videos that we, we sometimes mock, like the cute panda videos or the kitten videos or that they actually boost your happiness so oh, yeah they, yeah and so like do adorableness therapy go watch something like some adorable animal and you'll you'll feel better so to kind of like get that into your your day adorableness therapy and there's also um crying helps you no to feel better. pardon really yeah and there's okay. even in japan they actually have a whole service. This is, I, you can Google this or read my book, where okay. women cry and they hire this handsome man to wipe their tears. It's part of the crying therapy ritual. They have this handsome man wipe their, this, I forgot the name, it's a Japanese term for it. I don't have the book handy, but um, yeah. But you can Japanese. also check out the, the studly guy. Just uh, the studies do show that crying does release, so it's okay to cry. Uh, did you hire? It. Did you try hire a man? Did it, did you try it? I mean, did you all the fifty? I you can't have it in the book if you haven't tried it. I haven't tried it, but I guess it could be a tax write-off if I did because it's research for the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure in New York you have somebody in the village who's making a living doing this. Maybe I set up a new business where I just hire all these. Studly guys. Karen, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if I read that you've done it next. No, I'm not. Because you're like you're like 
my girlfriend says that as soon as as soon as I've thought about something, it's already done. You know, it's already a, yeah. a vomit. But it out, so. it's happening in Japan. It hasn't infiltrated. Yeah, Japan. but the, every, there are there are more things happening in Japan. <laughs> I mean, they are crazy. So <laughs> you could write a book about. Them. I don't think they're happy. I mean. There is a book of all these Japanese inventions that I, I got at some bookstore. It had like all these crazy and like designs and stuff, which I, I love J- Japanese design. Yeah. Oh, I've seen some Japanese TV and I mean, uh, they are, uh, they are weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're going off subject here. Yeah. But, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at your book. So when does it come out? December officially. Okay. All right, well, I'll put a link in the show notes. And, um, and uh, do you think you could maybe send me the contents page? Or like sure, or just... yeah, we're about to put it up on my website. It's up on Amazon now. Okay. You can pre-order on Amazon. Um, and we're about to, as of today, which is like August, what is today, 20th? What are we, okay. August 20th? It's not up on my website, but it should be up like in the next month. Well, maybe I'll just concentrate on the song about this one so I can help serve you to help people to be happy and so happy habits song happy habits yeah let's uh okay so yeah, we need let's... to think of something that rhymes with habits <laughs> mm. uh, this, no, I I'm use rhymes very <laughs> what it doesn't have to rhyme with habits I don't, uh, <laughs> don't worry right we can we can make we can come to the rhyming later i just use okay. a, a website so you type okay. in all yeah okay. okay brilliant yeah let's uh that's it so i'm delivering what sort of deadline you need to set I'll get it to you as soon as possible. Oh, cool. Thank yeah. you. No I'm problem. very curious to see what you whip up there. Okay. Well, that's, uh, no, it's nice to have a project like this. Because <laughs> this, uh, the biggest problem with people like yourself, who've already done 40 books is and have all these, is just to narrow it down. So I need to, you know, and it's like when you work in advertising, you need a brief, you need a, you need yes. a, yes, you yes, yes. to narrow it down. So. I, 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 there's a Spider-Man uh, also, I'm always coming up with ideas, and I have to tell myself to limit it. I'm yeah. sure you're that way, right? Sure. So, yeah. It's Spider-Man. They say his gift was his curse. His curse was his gift. So I feel like having too many ideas actually is not good. Like It's like just to focus, and I kind of need mm. someone to follow me around, slap my hand, put that down. Don't work on that. Focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> a book like, in that, Karen. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I want to do an aromatherapy candle. Oh, I want to do clothing now. Oh, I want to do yeah, you know, yeah. posters. Oh, I want to do a song. I want to do this. I want to do that. But do you have, you have assistance? You have an army of, uh, do you have a lot of helpers? I am my own army. I have a fantastic website developer, but the problem is he's so brilliant and so fantastic that he has a full-time job, but I do not want to go to anybody else. And so he's just available for me on the weekends. You do all these books and all these artwork and everything yourself. Oh, each book has its own um, team that I work with. Okay. So, oh, yeah, right. so each book has okay. its own team. But I, oh, I, I design all of my quote posters and I, you know, my blog. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But each book has its own team. And okay. I oh, that's right. Really, um, every, I find fantastic illustrators. And fantastic right, right, right. Authors, and, and then I work with the, an in-house designer. Um, okay. So, yes. So it's not just oh, me right. doing it. On a project piece. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I just uh, imagine, I just wonder how you got it all done because... Uh, it's it's incredible. Coffee, yeah. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, fantastic. Well, I think we uh, we I uh, want Karen interview Dick. I've okay. got to move to my next stage. Right okay. song. Yay! Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Karen. Well, uh, love to you. Love to your son. Have a great day. Thank you, Ari. He says goodbye. Oh, now he's into his video games. He can't. He has his. He can't even hear me because he's got his little thing on. Okay. But I'm sure he says goodbye. <laughs> All right. Give him, give him my love. Okay. <laughs> All right. All righty. Okay. Bye, Karen. Throw your television out of the window. Replace
replace it with flowers or something that grows Pay other people to do cleaning you hate Get out of the house and spend time with your mates Happy habits Reprogram your day Happy habits Blow your blues away Happy habits Ask some simple tricks Happy habits To make your good mood stick Learn a new skill, it can be anything Paint a picture or do colouring Exercise and then stand on your head Cheer yourself up by freshly baking bread Happy habits Reprogram your day, happy habits Blow your blues away, happy habits Ask some simple tricks, happy habits to make your good mood stick Stop with the texting and have real conversations Practice compassion and forgive your relations Say for a trip that'll be good for your soul Focus your sights on a single life goal Happy habits Program your day, happy habits Blow your blues away, happy habits Are some simple tricks, happy habits To make your good mood stick Meditate in the morning Before you check your phone have fun days out with happy friends and then quiet ones alone Keep a journal to get thoughts out your head Count your blessings before you go to bed Happy habits Reprogram your day Happy habits Blow your blues away Happy habits Ask some simple tricks Happy habits Wow, you should be in a good mood after that. Hold on to that feeling. Spread that feeling. Spread this podcast. If you could just send it by WhatsApp or text message to one person after listening to this, I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to hear the song again and again, which obviously I know you do, you can go to Spotify, Deezer, iTunes, or even better, download it from the website podsongs.com. Thank you to Mauricio Sonicola and Massimino Vozza for working with me on the music and Dori Verbo, my researcher. And thanks to you, the listener. See you next time. <laughs>